Hello and welcome back. Uh, I'm here with uh, our friend of our channel, Tim, is joining us. By the way, Tim is a pro-over expert. Okay, I know. How long have you been brewing, Tim? How many uh, years? Actually, not very long right now. Um, okay. I just kind of got into coffee a little over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talk about the uh, ultimate uh, pro-over recipes for, I mean, people like us, okay, people like me. I want something simple. Okay, I know. Uh, most of you watching my video, uh, most likely you watch James Hopman's Ultimate. Here, let me show you what what uh, what I'm talking about here. So he made a video a couple uh, some time back. Uh, Ultimate V60 recipe. Okay. And if you have your own preferred okay. technique and way of brewing, I think there's going to be something. And then he did the technique that uh, is okay. Hold on. Here's the technique. Uh, he does like five different pull. Okay. I mean, that's quite a bit. I mean, most of us watching his video, I mean, for myself included, I got confused. Okay. I mean, I, I got so confused by following his step. And Tim, have you seen his uh, video before? Yeah. Yes, I have. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what, what do you think about his recipe? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't particularly have any issue with his recipe, but okay. um, coming from you know, thinking back when I was first getting into pour over, mm -hmm. his recipe was also one of the first ones I tried. And knowing what I know now, I know that higher pour recipes tend to be a little bit trickier for beginners. They're okay. a little bit more susceptible, or it's a little more sensitive to how you pour, a little bit more sensitive to, say, how many fines your grinder puts That's out right. and how you're moving the fines around within the, the actual bed of the brew. Um, and so I wouldn't necessarily call it a simple recipe. I think it's a very high level recipe. And if you know what you're doing, you can get really, really great results out of it. Um, but for beginners, I think it's easier to start with lesser pours and work your way up in Correct. terms of pour count. Okay. So, I mean, again, the James Hopkins video was a five different pour. Okay. And then, so this recipe we are about to show you, and the team's going to demonstrate you uh, one pour, correct? Well, one one bloom and one pour, yes. One bloom and one pour, and then I'm going to be doing the similar. Uh, uh, I'm going to do the similar brewing uh, uh, step as well. I'm going to do the one blooming and one pour too. So I'm going to show you side by side, and then today I'm I'm trying to do a similar setup for Tim. Uh, we are going to use the V60. Tim, I'm going to use the V60, right? Yes, I am. Okay, uh, we're going to do the V60, uh, and the same coffee as well. Yep. Okay. I got coffee from Brent from Good Brothers Coffee. This is a Peru Geisha. So we have the yep. same coffee, same brewer, and also we're going to be using the same hand grinder as well. Well, so, slightly different, but yeah. I'm using my hand grinder and you're using one of yours. Yeah, the C40. Same. Yep. Okay, same uh, from uh, Cut. But right. again, uh, comes to water. Uh, which water are you using? Hot pack of uh, third wave water or something else? Uh, I'm using uh, holy water, which okay. is a little bit different, but it's very similar in terms of composition to holy water. Okay, so, so people are hearing right now, what is holy water, by the way? Holy water is a, uh, it's a water recipe developed by um, this guy on Instagram, and okay. now it's, uh, it's commonly known as like a filter brewing water, okay. uh, kind of giving you a lot of clarity and acidity. Um, and I've found this water works really great for a lot of the coffees. I think it works really great for H&S coffees. Um, this is actually what H&S uses at their roastery to kind of evaluate their coffee. Yeah. Uh, and so it, given that's what they kind of use to make their notes, I find it gives a really great result for their coffee. Um, but I think I've, it's just been really great for a filter. Okay, so for people talking about making your water, we are simply talking about uh, having a mineral ready uh, buffer, we got the salt and uh, calcium. Okay, uh, I know some it can be overwhelming, but uh, there's a lot of resources on that as well. Actually, I have my video, I, I made a couple of videos on my channel too, how to make your coffee water. So, I mean, don't be afraid, okay? It's not that hard, okay? It's not, it's not that hard, it's pretty easy to make your own coffee water. But again, in the beginning, you know what, just follow this simple step, okay? And then we are about to show you guys. Very So this, I, personally, I prefer this method over uh, James Topham or some other recipes out there. You know, take the guesswork out. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, five pour is a lot. 
Okay, I mean, there are different steps. So uh, hopefully this video simplify your pro over process. How Agreed. many grams are you gonna use? Uh, I'm gonna do my, my normal 15 gram. Okay, 15 gram dose. Okay, so let's go 15 gram. Uh, well, uh, what did you set at your water temperature at? I'm doing 92. 92, okay, I'm gonna set to 92. So I'm gonna be gonna do a 15 gram dose. Uh, this is a pretty uh, pretty light roast for uh, this coffee. Uh, I think it's a really great uh, representation of what uh, kind of the geisha varietal can mm -hmm. taste like. And I think it's a really great example uh, of a Peru geisha as well. Okay. I think uh, 92 uh, is great. Uh, what, uh, what about uh, how many clicks? Um, let me check where I'm at right now. Yeah. I'm at 24 clicks right now. Um, okay. For one pour, I think we can maybe go a little bit finer, but curious yeah. to see what you think. Um, I have kind of a, I have Avica Plus and uh, T90 and Avica. Okay. So again, you just use the whatever paper you guys, you know, you guys have at home. So this makes us, you know, make it simple as possible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I usually wash my paper. Um, I think I usually just do it under the tap with like a hot, hot water. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Uh, I certainly wouldn't belittle another. Oh, I'm not belittling James Hoffman's method at all. Absolutely not. Um, do not. Yeah, don't don't kind of mis misconstrue what I'm saying here. Um, I really do think uh, because when I was first getting into pour over, I struggled with James Hoffman's method a lot. Um, I found it gave me. I would either stall out the brew or I would get a lot of fines, kind of stuck to paper, and it really slowed down my brew. Um, and a lot of times I just get a really heavy over extracted cup. Mm -hmm. And I think it's better to kind of talk more about the recipes and give people more options for something to try um, rather than just saying, yeah, this recipe is the greatest or this recipe is the worst. I mean, it's really, it's a bunch bigger kind of looser spectrum than, than yep. I think people like this thing. Okay, it comes to ratio, Tim, uh, which, well, you like ones to 16, one to 15, or what do you prefer? Um, I uh, for my taste, I usually like a little bit of a lighter brew, so I'm usually okay. in that one to sixteen to one to say seventeen ratio. Yeah. So one to sixteen. So uh, we are talking about ratio means. Uh, uh, so let's say we are using fifteen grams of coffee here. Okay, we are using fifteen grams. If you go one to sixteen, it's about two hundred forty grams of water. You are going to add it to about two forty. Okay. Uh, you know, it's, I mean that's just the ratio. Uh, coffee to water ratio. I do tend to like a little bit of a lighter brew though, but uh -huh. um, it's kind of the same thing where you should kind of try a lot of different ratio and just see which see what you like. Okay, and then and uh, how long you like to wait for the blooming? Um, for this coffee, which is about um, a little under three weeks old for me. Okay. Um, I would probably do close to a full minute of blooming. One minute of blooming time. Okay. So, so again, so we're going to, uh, uh, what you're going to do one to three ratio for the blooming or 15 grams of water to what, like 45, uh, 45 grams for the blooming or, or what do you like? 50. I think 50. Okay. Um, I think for, for 15 gram, I really like this recipe 15 to 250. Okay. okay. Um, the reasoning being is you can just do a 50 gram bloom and then you pour 200. It's yep. uh, very simple. You don't really have to keep track mm -hmm. of 45 and 205 and all this stuff. Okay. So um, Good. I think just 50 and then 200. Very simple recipe. Again, just, just, just go simple. Just go simple, guys. Okay. So we gotta, I'm going to add 50 grams of water right now. And then I'm going to wait about a minute and do the rest. Okay. And I'm going to, I like 1 to 16 ratio. So I'm going to go to 1 to 16. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, I'm going to add up to 240 grams of water. Yeah. I'm going to start with the 50 grams of water. Yep. Yeah, and I, I do like to give my blooms a little swirl. Nothing too okay. crazy. We yep. don't want to over agitate, yep. but yeah. Uh, so this is uh, better for us. Okay, be uh, better for someone trying to get into prover. Five pour is uh, very compl uh, compl complicated, all right? That's why I'm trying to come up with a recipe that is extremely simple. I know quite a few people does that as well. I know, I think Lance did a while back, uh, 
blooming and single pole as well. I know a friend of mine, Vincent, does a single pole. I mean, he only does a single. Okay, that's uh, not even blooming. Ah, uh, yes. Ever try uh, Vincent's recipe? Uh, that's uh, Tails Coffee. Yeah, correct. yeah, Tails Coffee. Uh, I actually haven't tried his recipe. I don't. Uh, I've never tried um, doing the single pour and stirring during the bloom yep. um, without actually stopping pouring at all, um, which I think is a very interesting uh, technique that he employs in his in his recipe. Yeah, so I'm just kind of pouring slowly. Um, my scale is reading about three mm. to four grams per second as I pour all the way up. Yeah. So it, takes, it took me about 45 seconds to pour that 200 grams. Um, and I'm just kind of pouring throughout the bed and trying mm -hmm. to get a kind of uniform um, okay. agitation throughout. And I'll give it a little swirl just as it, mm -hmm. as it draws down. I mean, for me, it was, I, mean, I just went fast, okay? I just went to 140 gram water really fast. And personally, I like the faster brew. So right now I'm at two minutes and 20 seconds right now and I'm close to draw down. So most likely it's going to be around two minutes and 30 seconds for my time. Yeah, mine too. I'm right at 2.30 and I'm pretty much at a dry bed. Yeah. Yep, 2.30 right now. Yeah, it's dry bed here, as you can see. Yeah. Yep. Sure, I like yes. to give it a little bit of swirl, sure. take a little bit of time to kind of appreciate okay. the aroma. Okay. And then usually I'll pour myself a little bit and kind of drink that when it comes to, to sure. a nice drinking temperature. I don't usually like to drink really hot coffee, but uh, I do like to try to appreciate the flavor when it's hot. Okay. okay. So let's give it a try. Yeah. I mean, same here. I mean, I, I like to add just a little bit, okay, on my cup. And I like to absorb it even more. Right. Uh, you know, just smell it. Yeah. It's nice I have a very similar cup to you. Cheers, it's buddy. a little different, but yep. cheers. Okay. So tasting note on this one, apricots, green apple, and honey. What What mm -hmm. are you tasting? I mean, honestly, I think Brent hit this one right on the nose. Um, okay. I get a really nice kind of apricot um, sweetness, and uh -huh. how it ties in with the acidity and the bitterness gives a okay. very, very apricot-like um, flavor profile. Okay. Um, I personally taste more of a peach note than a uh, green grape note, okay. but um, I think I I've had friends who have tried this coffee and have also tasted okay. that green grape, so I can definitely see where that's coming from. Okay. Um, and I get a very sugary type, a very yeah. simple sweetness, kind of like honey or kind of like sugar or agave syrup. It's very, um, very clean sweetness there. Very clean, uh, very complex, uh, if you ask me. Very tea-like. I mean, there's mm. there are so many recipes. If you get a room with twenty different people who brew coffee, you're going to get twenty different recipes. Yeah. Um, and that's not a bad thing, right? I mean, like I I, I kind of agree with you. I I don't think any recipe is necessarily better than one another, right? Objectively, they're just recipes. Mm -hmm. I think personally, for each person, you're going to find a different answer on what recipe they find best for themselves. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I think. Um, there, there shouldn't be something that's like, you know, this is the only recipe that everyone should be brewing with because then we should all just get a mocha master and, and have sure. a drip pot making us yeah. coffee. Um, I think each person's influence on their own brewing process and how they have their own unique way of brewing coffee that has developed through their experiences, I think that's a wonderful thing. And I think it's a great thing to share with others. Sounds, yeah, I mean... I